G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be continuing our classic players series, this time with Shane Crawford. If you haven't come across our series before, we have videos out so far on James Hurd, Ben Cousins, Jason Akermanis and Daniel Kerr. Shane Crawford will go down in history as a legend of the Hawthorne Football Club. Crawford was drafted with pick 13 in the 1991 AFL Draft, the year the Hawks won the Premiership, but it would be their last flag for some time. Crawford was unlucky in a sense to join the Hawks at the tail end of such an amazing dynasty, with a bunch of their heroes from the 1980s departing the club along with coach Alan Joyce around the time of his drafting. Crawford would play his first AFL game in 1993, and he certainly made an early league-wide impression, taking a nomination for the Norwich Rising Star Award that season, an award which was eventually won by Brisbane's Nathan Buckley. Within four seasons, Crawford would earn his first All-Australian Guernsey and was widely regarded as a gun of the competition. By today's standards, Crawford was actually a small midfielder, standing at just 174 centimetres tall. As a player though, he was exceptionally damaging, with a deadly burst of pace which would regularly allow him to break the lines and kick long goals. Crawford was a very well-rounded midfielder, and he played with a toughness and willingness to fly for the ball that belied his small stature. As a teammate and leader of the club, Crawford was inspirational and would flog himself at training in an effort to get the best out of himself. He was the consummate professional footballer, with his preparation with regard to footy second to none, and he was held in very, very high regard by his teammates. As a result, Crawford was awarded the captaincy of the Hawthorne Footy Club for the 1999 season. That 1999 season would prove to be the defining year of his decorated career. The Hawks may have missed the finals that season, but Crawford would announce himself as one of the absolute best players in the competition, taking out both the Brownlow Medal and the AFL Most Valuable Player Award. Between 1998 and 2003, Crawford easily enjoyed the peak of his career, winning the Brownlow, three more All-Australian Guernseys and four Hawthorne Best and Fairest Awards. In addition to being a gun footballer, Crawford was quickly becoming a popular TV personality, in particular as a regular guest on The Footy Show. He's a pretty funny fella and doesn't mind taking a risk on national television either. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes, his antics are just borderline weird. Crofts was definitely a bit of a ladies man too, and I have to say this following clip absolutely cracks me up. I think it's, I think it's really nice that people actually look at me, they think, oh yeah, he's a, a sexy type of guy. You know, I, I get, not emotional, but I just, it really churns inside. Crawford's career would hit a bit of a stumbling block in 2004, a season in which he broke his arm and the Hawks slumped to 15th on the ladder. Following that season, Crawford stepped down from the captaincy, although he was able to regain his elite form in 2005. Despite all of his individual accolades, an AFL Premiership still eluded Crawford. In 2008, however, the Hawks would stun the Cats in the 2008 Grand Final in Crawford's 305th AFL match at the age of 34. To this day, he holds the record for having played the most AFL games before receiving his first Premiership medallion. Despite being offered another year by the Hawks at the time, Crawford declined the contract and retired from AFL football, preferring to end his career on a high note. That's what I'm talking about! In 2012, Crawford would be inducted into the AFL Hall of Fame. Post-retirement, Crawford is a columnist for the Herald Sun and remains a media personality. In 2009, he broke several world records on the footy show, including having 157 spiders on his body in a tank for 30 seconds. Crawford is also very passionate about fundraising for breast cancer research, with That's What I'm Walking About in 2010 and The Tour de Croft in 2013, which combined raised nearly 2 million Australian dollars. Shane Crawford will be remembered as a champion both on and off the field, and I'm sure Hawthorne fans will be looking forward to the day when his four sons become draft eligible. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you have an idea for which player we should do next in the series, let us know below. Thanks. Bye for now.